Pinky Berries. Hello and welcome to Beauty Diaries. I am Namure Ademioya. Today you'll be going with me to two places and I'm going to show you how some things are done when it comes to the woman's world. Now, the beauty industry is vast. We have nails, we have hair, we have fashion, we have lifestyle, we have healthcare, we have, you know, good sceneries, hotels, we have things to do with sights and sounds. But today, in my diary session, I'll be going to two places. Now my nails are not tidy. For some of us who like wearing our nails natural, some other people love having extensions on their nails. Whatever way you want it, make sure you have it neat, looking good and uh, presentable. Some of us can do without having, you know, those nails well, you know, manicured and looking good. For some, when you look at the appearance of a man or a woman, you look at the nails and you want to talk to the person some more, or you get distracted and you don't want to talk to the person. So I'm in the nail studio today, and we'll be, to we'll be talking to Wale. Wale um, will be putting us through on how he does acrylic nails, okay? and the difference between acrylic nails and stick-ons. Of course, some women know that, so it's not news, but hey, I'm sure some men do not know how these women stay long in the nail studio to work on their nails and come out beautiful. If your own nail technician, if you're sure of your nail technician, yeah. you sh that should not be a problem. Because if the nail is being fixed in a way that while it's growing, it does not lift. Okay. There is no home for water to now penetrate mm. and form moist. So yes. there is nothing that will now result to fungi. So today you will be um, going through the process with me on how to have these nails wrapped up with acrylic and all of that, okay? And then from here we will go to Bukin Lavida Studios where she will be taking us through the makeup process Pay particular attention to how to contour your face. Contouring is essentially the art of using shade and light to sculpt your face. You can use um, the art of contouring to create an illusion. So maybe you want your face to appear slimmer or more chiseled. You know, contouring is what you should do. You know, in some parties or wherever you go to or when you look at some pictures, you see the way some ladies contour their face and you see it like a mask, you know, the, um, the contouring is not well blended. So Buki Lavida will be taking us through all of that today. Welcome to Beauty Diaries. You're sure gonna have fun as we go through. Stay tuned. Beauty Diaries. I've been in this business since 2006, so that's approximately 12 to 13 years wow, now. Wow, that's a long one. I will say I'm actually a natural born artist, like I tell everybody. So nails for me is what I actually started in 2006. Before then though, I was into this artwork, I was drawing and painting. Really? So my other brother advised me to learn this job, and I did. And in no time, I actually caught up there. I was working for someone when I came here. I actually came to this town to work for somebody. So in 2009, I quit the job and I, I, I began to work for myself. Since then, I trained a lot of boys, girls, and even people that work for me to date, I trained them because I like to train my own workers myself. I'm actually reducing the length of the nails because I don't want the length of the nails to be showing underneath the Okay. tip we are going to fix. So this was what I had, you know, what my nails actually grew with the former um, fixing I did. Yeah, it's our work. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I have to cut it off. And I think the reason why you're cutting this off now is because your nails are not even, you didn't come back on time. No, I actually cut everything off myself. Mm, it's normal. Oh, we, really? We'll just get to feel it in a way that will correct the way it grows, okay. giving it curve on top of the nail bed. 
Okay. So now we know that with your natural nails, you can actually wrap and you're good to go. Yeah, you can wrap and good to go. Instead of fixing false nails. Yeah, sure. Even if your nails are those type that doesn't grow on a normal day, here we have the magic to make it happen. How often? Because we see some people getting fungi infection and all of that. Okay, I like this topic. The, yeah, the fixing of nails. I like this topic. Yeah. Actually though, I don't like when clients mention that they get fungi infection due to the fact that they have their nail fixed or something. I tell them there are reasons that could actually make fungi fungi happen to your nails. Mm. Number one of the reasons is moisture. When you dip your hand into water like quite in, with quite a, in quite a number of time, then you are likely to have to develop fungi on your nails. Then if your own nail technician, if you're sure of your nail technician, yeah. you sh that should not be a problem. Because if the nail is being fixed in a way that while it's growing, it does not lift. Okay. There is no home for water to now penetrate mm. and form moist. So yes. there is nothing now that will now result to fungi. That okay. is one. And secondly, if the client is not is not careful enough and the client keeps hitting her nails, yes. that might actually so, develop to fungi. Okay, because she, you know, she gets injured exactly. you know, inside. Let's and say there is a blood coat. Yes, blood, blood clot in inside. Yeah, then like that's, I have a crack here, yeah, but I quickly took it off. Yeah, I, it's okay I now. I hit my nail somewhere. This is okay. So long as you took care of it immediately, you won't result into fungi. There, there is a lot of things that nail technicians should actually understand about this job but it's actually sad that so many nail technicians don't take a lot of things serious they should okay. understand nail as a whole you should know where to file and where not to file and all that how to undo your file most especially when you're filing a natural nail itself My younger days, I, you know, we used to do stick on and we used um, super glue. Of course, we all know that that's not good for the um, fingers. Do people still use super glue? Um, in the market, sometimes when I go to buy products, I see people using super glue even in the market. Those new technicians in the market, but some of them still use the professional glue. It necessarily doesn't have to be resin glue though. Mm. But I actually choose this one. This is the one I've been using because I feel what's doing well, what what's doing, what's doing well. And if you actually want your clients to pay well, you should use what it is. What is it? Oh, okay. If your nail technician is not that type that fouls deep into the natural nails, you don't have any problem. You can fix your nails time to time, and your nails are not not destroyed. Yeah. Except if the nails are not properly fouled. If your nails are not being well maintained by your nail technician then you can have a nail, nail disorder. See some shapes pointed, do they have names? Yeah, they have names. Okay, so what are the different... Um... Like the pointed one you mentioned, the name for it is Tiletto. I think these nails are, these nails are actually named, these shapes are actually named according to what they look like, like the yes. ballerina. The ballerina shape, I think that one is because of that ballerina heel shoe. And you know, some people are, like, some people, it's it spinning by the sides. And some people still describe it as coffin shape. Then coffin? We, yeah, coffin shape. No, on my hand. But <laughs> if you <laughs> check, it's coffin shape actually. Ah! Then. Now that you said it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and you can, you can have ballerina in your head. It's fine. You, you're still referring to the same thing. And on the other hand, we have other shapes like square, scoval, we have. Oval, yes. almond, almond, and so on. Okay, almond. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, with all that we're doing here, I think it's time to go on the street once again to find out what your take is or what, you know, some people um, have to say. Mm. 
my name is Rita and I prefer natural hair, especially when I just retouch the hair because it's very light and slicky, shining and it's light. Then I also prefer artificial hair because it looks bold. Sometimes it will go with the kind of dressing I want to put on. I need something bold, not something scanty. My name is uh, Original. I prefer my wife or a natural hair because of we are Africans. And in Africa, we believe in nature. And nature is natural. And this artificial of a team is driving Africa world to the other part of the world, which is not ours. Yeah, I prefer artificial hair than natural hair because it looks more beautiful for me. Why I prefer natural hair is that I like being natural. I, like, I love everything about natural. When I keep my natural hair, I look good in it, so I love it that way. Then it's easier to maintain than natural hair. Natural hair is more expensive to maintain. I prefer the artificial hair. Why? Because it's easy. It's not stressful. You can just um, comb your your hair and put it on and go wherever you're going to. Going to. I prefer natural hair, um, but I can't keep it because it's very strong. That's why. I prefer natural hair to artificial hair because it makes you more, you look more natural and unique. But anyway, at times we go for artificial hair to change our looks, actually. Um, this is called acrylic liquid and powder. Okay. Some other people refer to it as nail cement. Nail cement? Yeah. Because it's called the nail cement, like I told you, and you know what acrylic does now. Acrylic is hard. Yes. It's only the primary form like this that is liquid and powder. The combination of the both of them produces cement. Oh, interesting. So it becomes hard after, after when everything is being done. Okay. So that actually prevents the nails from breaking Anyhow. If I want to do acrylic now, how much should I have in my purse? The difference between acrylic and stick-on without acrylic is not really much though. Yeah. For a new set like this, with the gel polish, is 6,000 euro here. This procedure is called the buffing. This is the buffer. The essence of the buffing is to ensure that the nails are smooth. And that's to ensure smooth effect of the polish. The major, the major hazard in this job is that your lungs could actually get infected because of the chemical chemicals we use in working, like the the liquid, acrylic liquid, and the the professional nail glue. Their smells are very strong. So using these things, I advise that you have your nose marks on to ensure that you're not inhaling directly the fumes from the liquid and the glue itself. And as well that you're working in a well-ventilated area, you have fans and AC, if okay. possible, okay. open the windows while you are applying this acrylic liquid. We all have our different characters we bring in here every day. So are you able to manage women, your okay. clients? I didn't want to mention this though, but I have to. You know, women are necessary evils, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> you have to tolerate people differently okay. because people are, people's behaviors are different. Exactly. So you need to know how to manage it, everybody, according to his or her own behavior. Okay. <laughs> Since I've been doing this work, I've never entered a fight yes. with any clients before or raising salt. Even if the person insults me, I just keep quiet and okay. let go. Okay. Now I have my nails made, all looking beautiful and red. Not too long, not too short, just the way I like it. Some like it very long. Um, like we said earlier, just like you do your makeup, your hair, 
um, how you make your clothes, how you wear your shoes, it also applies to your nails. So it's either you like it this way or like it the other way. Uh, Wale is going to take us through another um, artwork that they do when they um, fix nails. So we're going to do um, a 3D design on one of the nails for you to see. Now from the reviews we've gotten from viewers, as some have said we do not um, slow down when we're taking you through the makeup process. Buki Lavida is with us today, thank you so much. <laughs> Buki Lavida will be taking us through the makeup process, but today we're paying particular attention to contouring. Have you been to parties or have you wondered why some women have this dark patch here and dark patch there? talking about bad makeup. So today we're going to learn how to contour your face while making up based on the shape of your face. We have our pretty model here, Joan John, thank you so much for being part of the program. Now, you see the before, the process, and then after, okay? So, let's start work. Contouring is essentially the art of using shade and light to sculpt your face. So, what I'm trying to say is that you can use um, the art of contouring to create an illusion. So maybe you want your face to appear slimmer or more chiseled. You know, contouring is what you should do. Now, to contour a face, you, the first thing you need to do is to find out or decide what kind of face shape you have. It could be round face, it could be oval, it could be square, it could be heart or diamond. Whichever one, you need to find out and then you decide what areas of your face you want low light or high light. Low lighting would mean the areas that you want to downplay, sort of, and then highlight would be the areas you want to show. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to clean our model's face, make sure that the canvas is clean. We're like painters, so we consider the face our canvas, and just like every painter, you need to ensure that the canvas is clean and prepared for the product it's about to receive. So to quicken the process, I'll just use a hand for Go right. Next up, I'm going to be moisturizing the skin. This is all skin preparation. Next up, I'm going to be priming the face. This is a primer that I'm using. Now, in applying the primer, I'm focusing on the T-zone because for women of color, that's, those are the areas that they get oily the most. Just as I did with the moisturizer, I'm also working that into her skin with my fingers. So now I'm using my beauty blender. For me, this is like the secret weapon. I can't, I almost cannot apply a foundation without a beauty blender because it gives you an airbrushed finish and it also helps you work in the product really well into the skin. So using a beauty blender, I'm going to be applying the all over foundation, which is the foundation that is her right shade. So when I apply my foundation, I really take some time to blend it in because just as the name implies, it's the foundation, it's like the root of the makeup application. So you need to be sure that it's well laid for every other thing you're going to be doing on top of it. Using a foundation that is two to three shades darker than her original skin tone, I'm going to be contouring. I'm drawing an imaginary three. If I'm drawing from this area, it's going to go like this. So now without the highlight, we've created like a shadow on her face around the edges. Next up, I'm going to be highlighting. For this, I'm also using a foundation that is two to three shades lighter than her skin tone, just so it pops better. And like I said, no, just note that the light would ordinarily bounce on the center of her face. So those are the areas that you want to highlight. Personally, I prefer to use um, full coverage foundations to do the cream contouring and highlighting because I find them lightweight and you know, easier to blend. And I feel like one of the things I go for when doing a client's makeup is um, to achieve like 
a look like not so heavy and the client is not feeling all heavily made up or cakey. So I feel like foundations, full coverage foundations do that for me. The one I'm using particularly for to highlight is the Huda Beauty in Maketo. And it drives a powder finish which also makes my job easier. You can go in for the hard to reach corners, you can go in with a smaller beauty blender. So it's not awkward. Now in some cases I take it a notch higher by contouring the nose. So even though I don't think she really needs a lot of that, I'm just going to show you just so you know how it's done. So now that we've sculpted the face, I'm going to just go ahead and set with a setting powder. So I use an all over powder on the rest of her face. You can also use a translucent powder for this um, stage. Now, when you apply powder, or your all over powder, after the process, the contouring process, it's important to make sure that it matches the neck because you don't want to go out looking like you have a mask on. So it's very important to use a shade that goes with the neck. For some people, most people actually, the face is a bit darker than the neck because I think that's the area that gets um, exposed the most. So for people like that, you may need to take the foundation shade like one shade li um, lighter than you ordinarily would just so you match it up to the neck. I like to like maybe make the cheekbones a bit more pronounced, so I'm just going to be doing that with a darker powder. Then I'm just going to go ahead and dust off. So this is how you contour and highlight your face. Notice that I didn't put, I don't have any product on the lids yet. That's because I'm still going to do eyeshadow, my brow work and all. So I prefer to have less product packed on the lids because I feel that the skin there is really tender. So there you have it guys, a fresh look for a model today, hope you love it, thank you. Now you know what it takes to have a proper foundation on your face and how to contour your face. We want to say a very big thank you to Buki La Vida for taking us through that makeup process. 
We're also saying a big thank you to Wale Nails for taking us through the process of having your nails really looking good, um, moving around and being confident. Depends on how you want it, like we said earlier. Remember to remain beautiful inside and outside. My name is Namure Edemoya. Until we see you same time next week on Beauty Diaries, remain beautiful inside and outside. Bye-bye.